Okay, so it's just over 100 years now since Einstein um, came up with his uh, theory of general relativity, which is a theory of gravitation. And in contrast to the previous theory of gravitation, which was due to Newton, this is a geometric theory. It doesn't rely on mysterious actions at a distance the way Newton's theory did. And basically what it's saying is that gravitational attraction is due to the curvature of the space-time around us and the curvature is created by matter. And this interplay between the geometry on the one hand and uh, matter on the other hand is, uh, um, is um, said through the Einstein equations which, which is basically that the curvature of space-time is equal to the energy of matter. So this is at the heart of Einstein's theory of general relativity. So if we assume that we now turn off the matter, we have no matter present, then one would assume that Einstein's equation will tell us that uh, our space-time is flat. But this isn't uh, true, in fact, uh, just the Einstein equation with curvature of space-time equals zero is itself a very complicated equation. There are many different solutions and probably the most important solution of this equation is uh, a black hole solution. So black hole solutions uh, are solutions to this equation where a region, um, the black hole region, is such that um, an observer that goes into that region can't communicate with the outside world, with a distant observer. And um, they, they have um, a very... So the, the, the way a black hole is defined is via a surface which is called the event horizon. And outside this event horizon, um, it's like orbiting a very dense star. There's, there isn't anything special about it. But as soon as one um, falls towards this surface, the so-called event horizon, then strange things start to happen. So, for example, um, if one is sitting very far away as a distant observer from this surface and watching something fall in, then from that person's perspective, it feels as if it's taking an infinite time for that person to... Uh, approach that surface. Whereas for the person themselves, they reach that surface and go beyond it within a finite time. For them, the, this surface has no special uh, features or characteristics. Of course, if it was you or I um, who were falling into the black hole, then because we're not, uh, we have uh, a length and uh, the strong, the difference in the gravitational forces, say, between our legs and our heads, if we're dropping um, with our legs first, would mean that we'd basically be broken up by the tidal forces due to the strong gravitational field. So this is called sp uh, spaghettification, whereby we just get stretched and stretched until we uh, completely break up. But if we assume that we were just some tiny particle, then nothing special happens. And what's more strange is that once we're inside this surface, uh, time and space exchange. So uh, the notion of time becomes space and the notion of space becomes time. And just as outside the black hole or in everyday life, we're forced to follow time forward. Inside the black hole, we're forced to follow space forward. And what this means is that everything is moving towards one thing. And what Penrose and Hawking showed a few years, uh, well, in the 1960s, is that under very generic circumstances, um, if you have a strong gravitational field, such as you do in a black hole,
then singularities are always going to appear. So the, everything inside the black hole is together moving into a singularity. And uh, these, uh, so this, uh, th this theorem of theirs is called the singularity theorem. It's one of the most important results in general relativity. And it appears, say, in cosmology, you can apply this notion to cosmology by saying that if we have, um, uh, if we trace back our evolution of the universe, then again, generically, we will always end up uh, in a singularity. So how will we to view these singularities that are very generic and um, from an astrophysical perspective, for example, black holes are expected to, to appear. Um, we know for sure that at the centre of most galaxies there are black holes. And because of uh, what Hawking and Penrose says, they will have singularities inside them. Or recently with this new gravitational wave detection, um, where they found um, a signal of two black holes uh, colliding with one another and coalescing to form one big black hole. Um, that's uh, given as an indication that black holes are even more ubiquitous than we ever imagined. So clearly the appearance of a singularity is not a a very good thing for a theory and it indicates the breakdown of a theory and in some sense many people argue that this is one of uh, the greatest features of GR that not only is it a very successful theory in explaining say the discrepancy the, the discrepancies the Newton's theory encountered with say uh, the orbit of Mercury around the Sun um, and it's been incredibly successful at uh, explaining many phenomena in nature but it also tells us very clearly, demonstrates to us very clearly that something is wrong with the theory, that we need to move beyond um, Einstein's theory of general relativity and black holes are uh, really our only window into this uh, theory. So one of the biggest uh, challenges in uh, fundamental gravitational research is to um, come up with a theory that resolves these singularities such that the theory doesn't break down and we have a clear understanding of uh, what happens when so we clearly know that black holes will exist and uh, if one goes through the horizon then space and time will reverse, everything will move towards a singular point but then just very very close to that singular point what happens that is the main uh, question and that because of the very small distances is um, related to quantum theory because um, we know that um, as you go to smaller and smaller distances then quantum effects become important and so we're not surprised in fact that GR will break down at those scales um, and that's that leads to um, the search for say a quantum theory of gravity and there are uh, proposals along those lines, um, say string theory, where um, one tries to formulate a theory in which black holes uh, are not singular. So within the context of uh, string theory, for example, there is one proposal uh, which says that, which is called the the first ball proposal, which says that in fact what we see is uh, as a black hole classically say in Einstein's theory is in fact an averaging out of what are actually smooth surfaces and so um, in fact uh, there are there are solutions to this uh, 
theory, say string theory, a theory beyond Einstein's theory, whereby you have solutions which are all smooth, they have no singularities, but the way you put these solutions together uh, and average them out, um, it appears as though there's a singularity in sight. And even though this uh, proposal is very difficult to realize in four dimensions in the uh, in the world that we live in, three space-time dimensions and one time dimension. Um, if one goes to high dimensions, say five dimensions, then certainly one can find uh, solutions which are smooth, where there appears to be an event horizon from which one cannot escape, but inside um, there is no singularity, and this is very nice. Um, because it, it's some kind of a resolution of that problem, although there are problems that need to be addressed and uh, understood.